It's obvious that you listen to this show to hear about and support other people's dreams. But what about yours? What is your dream project? I'm here to help you break through whatever is in the way of your dreams and get you to the finish line. Go to dreamingbigcoaching.com today and take the first step. Literally, it's a button you can click to sign up for a free consultation with me. Let's find out if I can help you reach your goal. Click on Take the First Step. It's that simple to start the rest of your life. Get coached by Rob Southgate at dreamingbigcoaching.com. Look, we're all nerds here. Todd Stashwick's Nerd Circus is a great place to pick up nerdy paraphernalia and groovy wares. How about some sweet lava lamp dice? Or maybe a funky 70s rec room nerd circus dice box? Does that do anything for you? Need a drink? What about the book Mystic Libations? Critical Cocktails for the Thirsty Adventurer? Todd Stashwick's Nerd Circus is the place for nerdy threads, cool tabletop gifts, and more. Go to thenerdcircus.com and check out the cool stuff. Oh yeah, and let them know the TTRPG Insider sent you. Welcome back once again to TTRPG Insider. I am your host, Rob Southgate. The TTRPG Insider is a podcast about tabletop role-playing games. More specifically, about the amazing people that create these TTRPGs. Every episode, I am going to interview someone who's involved in the making of games that we all love to play. I want to hear their stories, hear about what inspires them, and their life in gaming, not just a description of their game. Today, my guest is Crystal Mazur. She is a writer and designer on The Black Ballad, and a lot of fun to talk to. That's enough for me. Here's Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Welcome to the show. I'm so honored to have you on TTRPG Insider. Thank you so much for joining me. I I think the people listening, they know that this month we are featuring the Black Ballad from Storytellers Forge. Crystal yes. is definitely a part of this. Uh, in fact, Crystal, why don't you tell people about yourself? Tell them what you do with Storytellers Forge, and yeah. then we'll get into all of it. Um, so specifically with Storyteller Forge, I am one of their uh, writers with the Black Ballad. I am overall, I'm a uh, game developer and freelance writer. Um, I have worked on a whole bunch of different game lines, um, specifically um, Chicago by Night for Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition. Um, I have also worked on Black Void and Never Going Home, as well as a whole bunch of others. Um, and I am the line developer for Pip System from Third Eye Games, which is an any award-winning uh, game line. So, wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got something called the Geeky Panda. Is this a blog? Yes. Uh, what is so this blog? <laughs> so um, it is a very neglected blog right now. It started out as a blog and then I kind of used it to house things like my um, references. So I, I have my CV, my writer's CV in there, which is all links to every single one of the products that I have worked on. Um, plus, I have to add a couple more because um, uh, I have a direct link to like my drive through, but there are some things on there because I worked on Frost Haven, if you are aware of that. Game. Sure, I've heard of Frost Haven, uh, <laughs> but that is not on drive through. So, right. Um, so I have to to add links to like the actual products and stuff for that. Um, and I use it also for my educator uh, portfolio um, so that I can link to it for other teachers to be able to see. Um, and uh, if I'm like interviewing for a job, I can use it for that, too. Yeah, very nice. Well, I was looking through it and I just was clicking on a couple of the blog posts and I thought they were fantastic. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I liked them. <laughs> I liked them. Thank you. The uh, the goodwill one where you talked about gamers and goodwill and you mm-hmm. you you were talking about, you know, where the money goes. I thought that was an excellent blog post. Thank so you. I'm telling everybody, go follow the geekypanda.com. Yeah. Uh, and that will encourage you to not let it be a neglected blog anymore because yeah, I enjoyed there's what I so saw. much I have to write on there. So, and so many ideas that I have. So, okay. Well, this, this conversation can be the catalyst after the black ballad launches, uh, black yes. ballad, the, uh, the backer kit, 
starts yes. March 7th. It goes for 30 days. Yep. So this is kind of your warning shot that like you definitely want to follow it. There's a link in the show notes where you could go and get on the email list yep. so that you are ready for everything and getting all the fun content that's going to be coming out. And if you've been listening to the show, you know, the team that's been on it has been awesome. Crystal, you are definitely part of the awesome side Thank of things. Uh, the writing on this is so good. And the stuff that I have encountered so far has been just excellent. Now, you said you've got a lot of background in this. Yes. Uh, was it always, were you always writing or have you had other other hats in the gaming industry? So I started out as a writer and um um, I got a, I have a lot of writing underneath my belt. Um, the development side came actually, it was really funny. Um, development is a, is a different part of the, the writing aspect. Basically, I look at the bigger picture and make sure all of the voices are working together to, to get what I want across. Sure. Um, and so, and I look at like game mechanics and stuff like that. I really love writing and working with the game mechanics, which is what uh, some of what I did on Black Ballad so far. Um, and I can talk about that in just a second. Sure. But <laughs> um, so... Uh, yeah, so so specifically with this, I um, I worked on the purgatory poker part, which I don't know if that's part of the Becker kit or not. Um, I haven't quite looked at it. I don't think it is. Um, anyway, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so it's news to everybody listening. It's well, it's going to be part of the launch. It's actually going to be part of of uh, what's on there for you guys to take a look at as some of the new mechanics that we have. Um, purgatory poker is essentially. Um, a way for you to be able to bet your place within this world to try to get a better spot in line. <laughs> oh, interesting. Um, yes. So it is it is essentially like you are gambling with your ticket out of there. Sure. Ooh, I like that because <laughs> let's face it, they're dead. So yes, they're dead. They're already dead. You may not be getting out anyway. So this, the, the stakes are good. Mm -hmm. uh, why wouldn't you gamble this to get out? I, you know, sometimes there are things that you, you just really, really want. Yeah. And sometimes it's worth that shot. You know, we were watching the game show network. We were just uh, overnight in Menominee, Wisconsin, uh, because of an ice storm and TV was crap. So all we had was the game show network and, you get to the end of things and people are doing, you know, card sharks. They can bet it all or walk yep. away with a thousand bucks. And it's funny because I'm my, the guy who kept a thousand bucks. He could have gotten 50 grand. If he had gone, he walked away with a thousand. And my wife and I talked about it endlessly about what would you do? Yep. You know, where are the stakes there? It's a thousand bucks. Well, that might be really great, but is it worth it? Is it worth gambling your life at that point? Do you think you're getting out? anyway or what is it only the hopeless that are going to gamble on it who yeah. knows who knows oh it's my favorite kind of mechanic too i <laughs> love that how exciting so, so yeah so okay uh as a writer mm -hmm. we're moving away from ttrpg for a second okay yeah as a writer you obviously are going to have writing heroes, people that you look up to, uh, not just in the TTRPG world, uh, although there might be. So yeah. who, who would you cite as like your biggest inspiration for what, for your writing or that even if it's not for your writing, mm -hmm. you just go, hell yeah. I read everything this person writes, watch. It's going to be like, you know, Ann Tyler or something. And it's like, <laughs> it's the opposite of this, but who, who would you say that is? Um, Oh, so there are there are a couple, and the biggest one is going to actually be Neil Gaiman, which I don't. What a think shocker! It, I know, right? Like it's but not huge, but it's Neil Gaiman though. He's amazing. Yes, and I got to see him speak live um, recently mm -hmm. too in Madison, Wisconsin, and um, he he's a speaker, and like I love where his ideas are plucked from. Yeah. And just the threads that he weaves with them. Um, it's just like, it's one of those things where I'm like, Ooh, how do you do that? Because I want to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> like, um, so, so he is definitely an inspiration. 
And then the other one is actually not going to be a traditional writer, but he is definitely a storyteller. And that's David Bowie. Oh, um, well he, done. Yes. <laughs> he is my all time favorite singer, all time favorite actor. The Labyrinth is my all time favorite movie. Sure. Um, you know, cause shocker fairies and yeah. Um, uh, but his, his music inspired me from such a young age and I listened to his music like nonstop growing up. Sure. And he told such amazing stories with both his words and also his personality and his like visual um, persona. Like he yes. could change his persona on stage. And I've, I also got to see him live and he, he would flip that switch to all of the different characters oh, that wow. he was playing on stage in that moment. Yeah. Like going from, you know, Diamond Dogs to the man who sold the world to Ziggy Stardust. Yeah. On stage in 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 a row. And every single persona was different. Yes. Yeah. True artist. Yeah. I'm, yes. I'm with you on David Boy. What a wonderful shout out there. You know, it reminds me, I when I'm asked questions like this, one of the one of the musical artists that I bring up, it might be Bowie, but it's typically going to be Lou Reed. Ooh, and that's a I, good one. I think the reason, and it's the same thing with Bowie. There's all that artistry behind it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it was it was something that Lou Reed said one time that that altered how I look at artists like these guys, right? He said, My albums are meant to be my novel. You're yeah. not supposed to listen to one and then listen to some random song later. At the end of my life, listen to my albums in order. It is my great novel. You will understand what I'm trying to say. And I'm like, bam, you're right. Because if you start looking at like when he did New York and Magic and Lost, all of a sudden it's like, what are you doing? And you look at Bowie when he mm -hmm. did Diamond Dogs and, you know, Ziggy Stardust, you're like, what, what is he telling us? What is he doing here? Yep. And um, amazing. Well done, Crystal. Well done. <laughs> I like when he passed away, like uh, that, that really, really hurt me um, as like a creator. And I, I'm generally not hurt by like celebrity deaths because I don't know them, but I grew up with him. He was right. like a huge part of my life. And there was a quote that he had that I have chosen to kind of follow as like my mantra. And it's, I don't know where I'm going from here, but I can promise you it won't be boring. Oh, I love that. So. <laughs> Guess what's going up on my wall? I love <laughs> that. Well, and you're going to appreciate this. I was at the library the other day. We haven't been in a while. And I picked up, I always pick up graphic novels when I'm there. Yeah. <gasps> oh. I haven't seen this. I had just found it. I'm like, I didn't the know man was a graphic novel. Who fell to earth. Oh my, my goodness. Daughter picked up one at the same time, not not knowing what I picked up that was like the biography of David Bowie. His biography in, is fantastic. As a graphic novel. Oh, is this a graphic novel? Yeah. And she said Why it's I know phenomenal. About this stuff? Yeah. Oh my goodness. She said it's phenomenal. So yeah, we're we're bowied up around here for <laughs> sure. Amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. So in the in the world of fantasy, because obviously yeah. we're playing in that sa sandbox, what are your favorite? I know authors, we're going to come back to the same few typically, yeah. but, but what are kind of the worlds that you go like, yeah, I love reading. Like I I've read Lord of the Rings 18 times, or I'm, I'm all Robert Jordan, or who is it that, that you go to? And it doesn't have to be one of the big names either. I mean, yeah. You know, um, so Tolkien is also like Lord of the Rings is one of my fandoms. Um, yeah. How that, could it not be right? I, right. Yeah. Like, and not only that, but I live in Milwaukee and Marquette University has one of the original manuscripts of the Lord of the Rings. And, you know, like they recently had a huge um, exhibition with it and with all of his art and all of his notes and stuff like that. And it was I amazing and gorgeous. Oh. <laughs> um, it even went through like all of his notes on how he built Elvish. Wow. And it was fantastic. And it even showed like some of his scrawls and stuff like that. Um, so I really love that world. And I know it's like the classic fantasy that you think of. Um, yeah, but, but it, 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 it works. It's it's like it does work. It's incredibly so well. well crafted story that 
became the benchmark. I mean, when mm-hmm. I, I was reading uh, Shannara and you're like, wow, this is just a copy in the beginning of Lord of the Rings. It's a great story and it goes off and it does all these wild things. But really, that beginning is Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. OK, I can take it. I'm down for the journey. Absolutely. I um, I love worlds with fairy magic type of thing to them. Shocker, okay. the labyrinth and stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, right. <laughs> um, and I, I also love stories that go against the tropes. Like they may take a trope and turn it completely on its side sure. and tell a brand new story with it. Um, I think one of the things that I really like, and I go back and forth between like a whole bunch of different genres. I, I love fantasy in general. Um, I like stuff with just a little bit of horror in it too. Um, and uh, one of the best things that I've seen actually um, are two things. One is Disenchanted, which is a Netflix show. Oh, yes. My daughter brings it up <laughs> constantly to me. And she's like, Dad, how have you not watched this? I watched the first episode. I liked it. I'm like, I'll binge it at some point. She's like, they're in like the seventh season. How have you not watched this? Yep. And, so, and I, I think it's I think it's just a great, great like way to turn everything up on, on its side and you know, really look critically at how we present fantasy. Cool. Um, cool. All and- oh, right. You're selling me on that one. Now. <laughs> um, and then the other one is going to probably be the dark crystal and oh. the dark crystal resistance. Oh, I uh, the newest it. dark crystal. I haven't watched resistance yet. I know. Don't make that oh, face at me. It's okay. one of those that I make that face at people all the time. And it's not fair. I will get to it, but I love the dark crystal. Now I was, I'm a lot older than you. And I was a kid when that thing came out, maybe junior high age or whatever, when the first one came out (laughs) and I went and saw that in the theater and was mesmerized. Mm -hmm. And I still have the big art of dark crystal book that I cannot get rid of because hell yeah. Dark crystal is incredible the the resistance is you you have to think about it in the aspect of their storytelling the beginning of that story with in a new era it's all still puppets and i'm not i don't want to spoil anything for you because there is a moment with the puppets where you're like that is absolutely brilliant and i am so glad i got to witness this so (laughs) i'm not gonna spoil it because but you will know the moment that it happens and you'll be like oh my gosh that is fantastic so in other words my weekend is going to be dark crystal resistance and bowie (laughs) just screaming through this house thanks to you be prepared for a lot of feels because the the resistance hits hard because you know what happens next yeah well you know what happens with the movie (laughs) i get i get the feels from the movie so if i'm already getting them there and I am an a, a unashamed crier. I will cry. <laughs> I don't care. Let it out. Uh, especially, I love stories that move you. Like you mentioned mm-hmm. horror. I just had a conversation with somebody today about that. That That's why I gravitate towards fantasy. It's why I gravitate towards sci-fi. And it's why I gravitate so heavily towards horror. Because it you, you react to it. It yep. takes you someplace. If it doesn't, it's boring. Yep. It's not worth your time. But when it's right, it's the greatest thing ever. Absolutely. So I'm with you on all of that. Although I probably it sounds like I like a little more horror in my fantasy than you do. Uh you'd be surprised. Like I um have you seen the new Hellraiser? Oh yes. That was great. Did you that like it? A, it was amazing. Like um like I didn't expect that. <laughs> no, I and I thought it was so brilliantly done with how they progressed the story and yeah. how they made it like the main character be basically her own deus ex machina. Yeah. The uh, previous, what, like eight of the previous nine or something. <laughs> yeah, something they did not like progress that. the story. They tried. No, but it was garbage. And then I saw this. I'm like, wait a minute. This is not garbage. This no, is it actually was... good. And, and the, the van scene where he's driving in the van and it yes. just elongates. It's a long yes. enough time where it's past <laughs> it elongates. I was like, 
that is so horrifying yes. to see your friends go further away from you when you know that you are in trouble. Yep. Like that is, Awful. that is pure horror right there. And I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see barbarian? I haven't seen barbarian yet. That's on my list to do. Oh, this is one that I started. I'm like, I get it. I get what's going on. Cause I mean, I've seen everything, you know, and yeah. you're kind of like, okay, this is what it's going to be. And it looks fun. And the acting's good. But this is going to be the bad guy. They're telling you it's the bad guy. They're broadcasting this and maybe they'll flip it and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's not what you think you're watching. Oh, and the rest of the movie, you're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm terrified. What is going <laughs> on here? I, I did not expect it at all. And the other one that I loved uh, a recent one was X. Oh, my God. X. Is I haven't just, seen that one. X is astounding and there's Ooh. there's a sequel that's out pearl and then there's one more coming out which is i can't remember the the character's name but it is it's a trilogy and they shot them like oh, back cool. to back and oh nice i love when they do that yeah and, <laughs> and i i've read a lot about it that it was written as one like thing even though they are playing with time Ooh, so okay pearl is a character in x but the story is like 50 years earlier or something. Okay. And it's, oh, I, I don't want to say anything more. X is, mm, but you better yes. like horror because it is freaky and scary. It's kind of like it has a Texas Chainsaw vibe to it, and Ooh. but they get it right, you know, instead oh, of like cool. a cheesy copy. Yeah. Awesome. So you got to watch you... that. I got to, I got to watch uh, Resistance. You got to watch that. Yes. I will. Um, I will also recommend another one. Um, if you like horror, do you like Japanese horror? Oh, of course. Okay. Uh, Junji Ito's Maniac. Oh, uh, yes. Japanese Stories it. of the Macabre. Yes, I know this. It's on my list. It's, it is amazing. Yeah. It is absolutely Japanese horror. And then, like, the 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 icing on the cake is that the ending credits, you know how yeah. they always have, like, the ending credits? Yep. Is, like, if horror met Studio Ghibli. <laughs> <laughs> And you're that sounds like, like a dream to me. And and the music is like more Studio Ghibli, and you're like, what? Yeah. What are they? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you know you were watching a kids movie that scared the hell out of you? <laughs> hey. hey. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. So okay, Black Ballad. Let's go back to that. Yes, we got absolutely. Black Ballad. Uh, the the uh, backer kit starts yes. March 7th. So we've got just a little bit of time before it launches, but then you got a month there to get things out. Mm -hmm. uh, you heard how great Crystal is. You have got to support this, please. We want to, we really want to help. Our first month with TTRPG Insider is focused on, on Storytellers Forge and the Black Ballad. I don't know who we're going to do the next month. Uh, <laughs> and, and not every episode I should say this to the audience and I, you're the first one hearing this too is yeah. not, it's not everybody on this first month is from storytellers forge. It's just, you're the focus. Yeah. All right. I've had Absolutely. a couple other people, which ironically have had ties to storytellers forge as I started talking to them. So <laughs> there is a lot of fun stuff to happen this month. Rick knows uh, a lot of people. Yes. Yes. And uh, between the two of us, there might be four people in the world. We don't know. So <laughs> that's perfect. Uh, Crystal, this was wonderful. I want everyone to follow the Geeky Panda and encourage you to write some more. I want everybody to watch uh, all these things and then connect with you and tell you how awesome your suggestions were. Where can they find you? So you can find me on all social media at the bo at Body and Soul One Five Two, um, or at the Geeky Panda. If you search either of those, my name will come up. Um, also, all of my social media links are on my website, so you can follow me there. Um, and I will be, um, uh, I'm posting right now for one of the other Kickstarters, um, that's not the focus here, but I'm involved in another Kickstarter as well. Um, and you can so mention posting, it, you can okay. mention it. <laughs> I'm one of the, um, the guest developers for, uh, cool name RPG here, uh, cool name, uh, cool name RPG is what it is. Um, and it's basically going to be a, um, genreless game system that is going to be open uh as an ogl as soon as we are finished and free to use for anybody awesome. um and so it's uh something that i have always wanted to do for the ttrpg community 
Um, and I am so glad to be asked to be a part of this um, as one of the guest developers. So Wonderful. See, aren't you glad you got to say something? We'll put a <laughs> link to that Kickstarter in the show notes as well. Yeah. And then as so, soon as Black Ballot starts, I will be sharing a lot more of that too. So Yeah. So follow Crystal and get in touch with her. Let her know what you think and follow her stuff and support her stuff. Because let's face it, we're all in this together, right? Yes, we want, absolutely. We want cool stuff. Crystal, thank you so much for guesting. This was thank a lot of fun. Thank you for having me on. And you know I'll have you back again because we got a lot more to talk about. Oh, absolutely. I will come on anytime that you need me to. Thanks, Crystal. <laughs> Thank you again, Crystal, for coming on TTRPG Insider and sharing your stories. If you or anyone you know has a crowdfunding effort or has worked on a TTRPG, send them my way. I love to share cool TTRPG projects and to help people reach their goals. You can connect with me through the TTRPG Insider Facebook page or via email directly to rob at ttrpginsider.com. You can find links to this backer kit for the Black Ballad and any links we discussed in the show notes. TTRPG Insider is a production of Southgate Media Group, hosted, edited, and produced by me, Rob Southgate. Thanks so much for listening to the TTRPG Insider. And don't forget to rate and review us.